We're all pretty emotional backstage after that last panel. Oh my <laughs> God. Um, uh, we heard earlier the story just now of a teenager standing up and doing something and, and we're telling her story many, many years later. I'm here with two very inspirational teenagers who make me feel like a massive underachiever on stage in, in the best possible <laughs> way, way. They're 14 and 19. Um, and if you don't know these two women, uh, you're going to get to know them now. And uh, I want to introduce Deja Fox, who Washington Post have called the new base of Planned Parenthood, the youngest staffer on a 2020 campaign. We might touch on politics a little bit. <laughs> and also the founder of Gen Z Girl Gang, which is really about activating that young generation of women. And Jordan Reeves, at 14, is an amazing force of nature, and she is the w inventor and the woman behind um, Born Just Right and Make Just Right, um, which we'll talk about as well. Um, I think one, I want to start with both of you. One of the things I see is that I feel like this Gen Z audience have become much more the face of causes than maybe previous generations. Yeah. You have Greta at climate change, you have the Parkland students around gun control. What do you think makes this younger generation different in that they feel they're, they're more front and center of causes? Yeah. I mean, we all just heard from Claudette, right? She is proof positive that young people have been at the forefront of our movements since day one. Young people are radical, we are change makers, we're the ones willing to take the risks. Um, but I think now as we look at our generation, Gen Z, we are uniquely positioned. We are digital natives, we grew up with Instagram and Facebook, and we have this amazing superpower that is social media, and we know it, and we know how to use it best, and we're combining social media and social justice to really make that impact and redefine the way that, that we make change. And so I think that that's why you're seeing so many young people at the forefront, even myself. I went viral the first time when I was 16, and it was because someone was at a town hall recording as I asked my senator why he is a white man, got to make choices about me and my body. And if someone hadn't recorded it and put it on Twitter, the world wouldn't have heard my story. They wouldn't have seen me. I wouldn't have ended up in his office and the offices of Congress people and senators lobbying on Capitol Hill later. Um, and so Gen Z really does have this unique superpower of social media, and we know how to use it. Uh, but young people have always been at the forefront. Let's talk about that. Jordan, you were teaching me backstage how to do a TikTok. <laughs> and I messed up the dance, I didn't get it right, but I've got, I've got more practice on me. But um, how have you used social media? You've really been, everything in, in your 14 short years, you've been talking about inclusion and normalcy. How have you used social media for getting that message out? Yeah, uh, I just, I think because we have social media, we see issues and then we have also like we have the platform in the fact that we can see issues but we can also take action on those issues and I've used social media for s all sorts of things um, I had a petition a while ago I don't remember how old I was uh, but I it, there's so many amazing things uh, on the internet that we can use to push and make change when we, because we see things and we feel inclined to make a change and it's right in front of us how to make a change. No matter how viral it may get, you're making a change. So talk to us a little bit about Make Just Right, which is working with design and uh, yeah. our, uh, everybody to make sure that they feel like they're including everybody in the conversation. Can you uh, let everybody know about Make Just Right? Okay, so I have two things. I have Born Just Right, which is a maker space where kids with disabilities can design off of their difference. We decided to make it because um, I made a prosthetic arm that shoots glitter. <laughs> it is brilliant. <laughs> we love to see it. <laughs> I saw the joy that it <laughs> made and like the positive outlook it put on disability because uh, not all people see disability as this happy thing, they see it as a negative thing. And I'm trying to shine, I saw that as a way to shine light on a positive outlook. And then there's a lot of things like compact into this, <laughs> but, um, 
we saw it also was an opportunity to make maker spaces and design more inclusive. So if one, you have more workers with different outlooks, you can think about things in a different way. It, because in most places that have designs, like they have like, they don't think, oh, will this work for everyone? And we want to change that with Make Just Right, which is a consultancy uh, where we can consult people on their designs and have our outlook as kids and people with disabilities. And yeah. <laughs> and you've been working with and petitioning lots of, uh, whether it's um, doll companies about including people with disabilities in their line. I just saw backstage, you, you're a star of your own Marvel comic, <laughs> which is pretty cool, right? Cool. How, yeah. how important is that in the seeing it? We, we talk often about if you, you can't be it if you can't see it. How important is the representation across lots of different media in design for you in terms of inclusion? Yeah, I think that um, at, if you don't learn about disability, like as a kid, you might not have the greatest outlook on it. And I thought uh, that if there were toys with disabilities that more kids would like, they'd see things and they'd be like, oh yeah, like my doll has that, so like, we're vibing. <laughs> 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 uh, but Amazing. also with the Marvel thing, yeah. I got the opportunity to be on a Disney Plus show. And that was a really cool opportunity. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Amazing. That was a fun way to have another just like, like a possibility to share my work. And I thought that was really cool. I'm trying to remember what I was doing at 14. It was not any of this. <laughs> I'm sure you are too. Um, Deja, yeah. you're one of the most politically active young women that I have come across in recent years. Um, and if you want to show what everybody what it says on your t-shirt. Future, future president, president, baby, 2036. Um, <laughs> love. I love that and I love it and it plays into exactly what we're talking about here and what Tori Birch and her team have been really good at, at advocating for, which is embrace ambition. For you as a young woman to stand up in here and say, future president, I love that. Yeah. This is a clip they might pull for the debates <laughs> in 20, 2026. Um, so you were one of the youngest staffers on the yeah. campaign, the youngest staffer for the 2020 campaign for Kamala. Let's dip into politics for a little while. Yeah. How do you feel about the state of the 2020 race? So I think first I want to double back. Me and Jordan have a lot in common. And one of the things that really connects us is representation. And when I was sitting, uh, so back it up a little bit, I was homeless in high school. And I know you're like, no way. True. Um, and I worked at a gas station. So to give you context, when I was 16, I was living with my boyfriend. I was working at a gas station. I was living in Tucson, Arizona. So obviously my life is very different now. Um, and I am the first in my family to go to college. I went to Columbia University. Um, thank you. Um, and I tell you all this to let you know that I don't take my educational journey lightly. Education means a lot to me. Going to Columbia means a lot to me. But as I sat and looked at the 2020 election, I knew I couldn't sit by. And I picked up my life, and I moved to Baltimore, a city I'd never been to before, and started work on the Kamala Harris campaign. I worked in a position as the influencer and surrogate strategist on her digital team uh, as a junior staffer. and. It was a position that had never existed before, right? When we think about the scope of presidential campaigns, digital teams haven't even been around that long. Um, and so I picked up, moved to a city I'd never been to, worked in a job that had never existed, and was the youngest in my headquarters and the youngest across any of the campaigns at my level. And now, as I look at <laughs> the candidates in the field, I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed. I picked up my life because I know how important representation is. We know how important representation is. I know how much it meant to me to see a woman of color, someone who was raised by a single mom like me, in the presidential field. And the work that she did showing up every day is not, though she is not our nominee, uh, didn't go to waste. Because when you lift up the people around you, 
When you invest in young people, young women, women of color, people from different backgrounds, you're building up that next generation of leaders. And when she invested in me, she invested in someone who is going to be president one day. How important, we now have a, a race where across Republican and Democrats, it's three older white gentlemen that are um, the potential president. How important is the VP ticket for you? I would say it's one of the most important pieces as I make a decision about this election. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I believe that when we have three rich old white guys running for office, um, it is their responsibility to look at how and who they surround themselves with, right? Uh, I worked on the most diverse campaign in the field, period. And I was a part of that diversity. And it was diverse not only in the way that we looked, but in our experiences, in the life uh, experiences we brought to the table every day. And it showed in our policies and the way that we conducted ourselves on social media and our messaging. And I, I think that these candidates in the race, um, as I look at who to vote for, uh, will be held accountable to surrounding themselves with people who come from diverse experiences. Tasha and uh, Jordan, both of you are so inspiring in how you take action, right? Yeah. A lot of people, I think, in this audience across generations have things that they care about and they're passionate about. Um, what's, what's a simple piece of advice for them to take action and get involved? Yeah. How can they do it? Jordan? Um, <laughs> well, uh, probably... <laughs> Uh, I say just like make sure to like find people that I don't even know. Ah. <laughs> I think uh, just surround yourself with um, different point of views mm. like from mm. everywhere because they're the type of views that you need because you already know your views. You don't need more of your views around you. You need different like you need it all like so you can learn more, you can also just supply to more people because your view's not gonna be perfect for everyone. That's a great piece of advice, Deja. I think I have two takeaways for you on this. The first is I wanna ask, I see a lot of, a lot of different faces in this audience today um, and I think all of you are probably working in your respective fields, embracing ambition in the way that that means for you. Um, and I wanna challenge you all as you go back to work, whatever that looks like, to ask yourself, how am I showing up for young people? Um, I'll repeat that. How am I showing up for young people? And also ask yourself, when was the last time you asked young people, how can I show up for you? Uh, because there are young people, not just the two of us, but across all of these different issue areas, across fields that are doing amazing work, um, who are leading in thought, who are pushing boundaries. Um, and so as you wanna get involved, think about the people that surround you and consider how you're bringing young people into that work. Uh, and then the second thing is that activism is very personal. It's something that's personal to me. It started when, like I said, I was homeless in high school and the sex education I was receiving in Arizona was just not enough. It wasn't good enough. It was last updated in the 80s and I asked myself, what can I do? This is an issue that personally affects me, so I challenge you to look at what issues are personally affecting you. And then I said, if this matters to me, it'll matter to the people who care about me. And I started bringing friends to school board meetings and we started telling our stories and after six months we won. And so the way that you can start to get involved, if that's the question you're asking yourself, which I hope it is, uh, I would challenge you to get personal. Get personal using your personal narrative, your personal networks, and the issues that are personally affecting you. I love that. Get personal and how are you showing up for young people? Jordan, Deja, thank you so much. Thank you.